Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and the Android 8.0 update is finally here. They announced it, released it. We know the name. It is not Android Octopus, as they tried to tease earlier. It is Android Oreo. As you can see, I went out this morning and bought some golden Oreos. That would be my preference over chocolate, and of course, got the Double Stuff family size. But anyways, this was expected, Android Oreo. That was kind of what everyone was speculating it to be. Now, with that being said, I have the Android 8.0 Oreo update installed both on my Google Pixel XL and Google Pixel. So I want to go ahead and show off everything that's new, as I always do with every Android version as I have in the past and as you guys have came to expect from me. Now, uh, I would appreciate if you'd subscribe to me. That'd be awesome. But let's go ahead and get into everything that's new with Android 8.0 Oreo. So to begin, Google says that the boot up times can be up to two times faster on the Pixel and Pixel XL. Now you'll see here, here's the Pixel XL. I'm gonna run through the boot up screen very quickly now. They also added a little bit of uh, feature to the end. They actually added power by Android down at the bottom. So it should boot up much quicker now. And you'll see that powered by Android with the G and that's it, it is now booted up. As always, want to jump into settings, scroll down, go to system, about phone, and you'll see I'm on the official Android 8.0.0 build. And interestingly enough, it has no reference of Oreos at all throughout the build. It has an O right here, an O-shaped icon. And then if you go to the Easter egg, you can go ahead and press and hold on the O. It goes into that octopus screen now. So, uh, which I guess you could say potentially looks like an Oreo with the white middle and then the black outside if you cover the octopus. But other than that, there's no reference of Oreo within the build that I can find. I did notice that if you put it horizontally, it will change the size of this specific octopus. So if I do it again, you'll see it is bigger now and then it can get smaller as well. So now you'll see it is much smaller. So interestingly enough, they didn't change this. However, it is Android Oreo. I will post a picture of the official statue that Google unveiled today over on the side. In terms of the home launcher, it is a little bit different. You can swipe up anywhere to get to your apps. So you don't just have to grab the apps at the bottom. You can just swipe up to get to all of your apps. Also, these icons down the navigation buttons do turn black as well when you are in your app drawer. You still have the Google search app integrated on the left. Of course, the first one, Android Oreo. Uh, anyways, if I swipe over, press and hold on that home screen, I can jump into settings and you'll see there is something called notification dots. So when you get a specific notification in an app, uh, maybe Gmail, for example, you'll see a little red dot right there. Here, I can zoom in just a little bit. Or if I go into my Google folder, Hangouts has one, the Google app has one, and you'll see they are different colored. So they are color coded as well. If I go over here, my Instagram does, my Twitter does, my other phone, Facebook does as well. Uh, and then if you actually press and hold on these apps, it gives you a quick preview of the latest notification. Also, you'll see I have other ones uh, identifying who these emails are from. I can go quickly into a specific email account or start a Gmail. And that is the same with all of their apps. So if I go to the Google app, press and hold, you'll see new story on Battlefield, voice search or search and you just have random shortcuts as well, even if you don't have a notification dot. So if I go to Twitter, scan QR code, new message, new tweet, et cetera, and that is de developer uh, coordinated. You can also turn off these notification dots if you do not like them. Now, you also have a change icon shape option. So you can have square, rounded square, squircle, teardrop. Let's go ahead and switch it to square. It will apply that icon shape. And of course, you see all of these icons now have squares to them, which looks a little strange. But nice, you can customize it. Of course, you could put it back to default if you'd like to. And also worth noting that when you're in your app drawer, the notification dots also apply as well. There's also a new picture-in-picture -picture mode, which adds to the productivity of Android. I'm in the Google Duo video calling app with my buddy Jason, and I press the home button, and you'll see it minimizes the app and actually still shows him on the screen. You can move around his picture and then act upon apps or things in the background as well. So you see, I go to the Play Store. I can go ahead and do that. I can type things up. I can go to Maps. I can go to other apps as well, all while video chatting. And then of course I can re-expand it and that's picture in picture mode. Also within settings, apps and notification, you can go to advanced and you'll see special app access down to picture and picture. So you'll see, you'll have to allow it access. So of course I just tried it on Duo, it worked. Chrome has it, Maps has it, YouTube has it as well. Hopefully more developers will, will integrate it into their apps so you can do two things at once with picture and picture mode. Of course, you still do have your split screen mode. You can press and hold and open up two apps as once just like you always were able to in Nougat. The pull down bar and notifications got an overhaul. So you'll see when I swipe down, watch the animation as each app swipes down. It just kind of pops in there, which is a nice little subtle animation. And you'll notice some new animations throughout 
this video as well. But it does have an overhaul. You'll see the settings app is there even without having to swipe down twice to get there. So you can jump into the settings very quickly. Just swipe down. Settings is right there. You do have your quick shortcuts up at the top, which you can customize. You swipe down, you'll see you can edit it right there with that edit button. And here they are. So a bit of a, a new look to them as well. Notifications themselves got an update. So when you go to swipe them away to the right, two things will pop up. You can quickly jump into the settings, the app notification settings if you'd like to, which isn't new. This one is new, which I think is really neat. You can snooze your notifications and you can customize how long. So you see 15 minutes, 30 minutes. They get snoozed for an hour as well. I think if I swipe this away, it looks like it snoozed for an hour there, but let's go ahead and try that on a different one. So let's snooze this notification pop down the drop down. You can do up to two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, or 15 minutes as well, or undo it as well. I think that's a really neat option. If you're in a meeting, you need to be re-notified of a message or something, you can just quickly snooze it. There's also a feature called notification channels, which is essentially grouping. You can press and hold and you'll see, uh, all. if I jump into all categories, there are a bunch of different categories that pop up within the specific app. So here's the Google categories in this app nearby places in transit. So now if I wanna go ahead and go maybe to the Gmail settings, here's all the categories within the Gmail notifications, mail, miscellaneous attachments, and you can kind of customize those specific notifications within that app. So mail, uh, if you want it to make sound or not make sound, you can based on, you'll see even my different Gmail accounts, I can choose if I want a notification from that specific one and customize that specific notification. Another really awesome feature with the Oreo update is smart text selection. So what happens when you double tap or select a specific text, you see the phone app pops up. So it recognizes what the text is. So it knows it's a phone number, not really, but you can go ahead and open up the phone app and it will go straight to that phone number. Now let's say if I wanna to go to the roost, I don't know if it's gonna recognize, it didn't recognize that that's a name. Now here's an address, so including 233 South Wacker Drive, which is the Willis Sears Tower, and you'll see maps pop up. So I can jump straight into maps, Uber, Lyft, and it looks like it needs a little bit of work. I should be able to double tap and it select it all, and that's not actually working. So uh, it should come along, but it is really cool that when you select something specific, it knows what app you wanna open it in. There's also updated emoji as well. So you'll see no more blobs, a completely new look, and also just new emoji in general. And of course you can press and hold on some of them and you can get an entirely different colored emoji if you'd like to and just other ones as well. So just overall, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go to that. And just overall, just random new emoji that you can choose from. So not only did the app icon get an update, the settings app itself got updated. Now it's way more condensed, way more categorized. It's not a huge long list. It has network and internet. You've got connected devices as well. Now, if I go to apps and notifications, you have a few at the top and then an advanced option where you can go to expand those settings as well. The battery icon, uh, the, the battery settings app got an update right away. You can see app usage uh, right on the fly, sleep. And also with the battery icon, the percentage up at the top here got a little bit more bold as well. So you can see it just a little bit easier. Jumping into display settings right away, uh, you do have a nightlight. You can schedule it as well and change the intensity. You can go down to advanced and th there's ambient display. So that uh, with lift to check phone and double, chap double tap to check phone. So ambient display got a bit of an update. So if I double tap to check the phone, it will activate that ambient display, show the time and a few app icons. Now if I double tap on those icons, it will expand and turn the display on, the actual display. So it goes to ambient display first then turns on the screen. Now, if I get a notification, that ambient display will show. However, you'll see it shows the message, Tim, hi, but I can quickly reply to it. Obviously, if you have a lock screen, you have to unlock it. And then once you do that, it will go into that quick reply option. Continuing on, you have sound storage where you can free up space and they also have smart storage using Google Photos to back up photos and delete them off your actual device. Security and location, now they have Google Play Protect that did just get announced. You'll see it looks good, no harmful apps. They scan specific apps for potential threats to your phone. Find my device is on as well. And then just some other random security options. And then finally, a few others, really nothing out of the ordinary, but it is definitely an overhaul and I do like it more. There's a new look to the media controls. So you'll see I have Spotify open right now and it takes the album art from whatever song you're playing and actually uses that as a theme to the specific notification right here. So if I go to my lock screen as well, load that up, it will be in the background, but also in your notification bar as well, it does theme that tray, which I think is a little neat. 
With Oreo, there's a new autofill option. So when you go to an app, go to login, it will autofill your information. You'll see you'll need to grant it access for that, but I have not done so yet. So when you go to log into my Twitter account, Instagram, anything like that, it will autofill maybe if you log out or install it on a new phone. The camera app just got some aesthetic changes as well. So when you switch to the front camera, you'll see that arrow spins front and back. And then of course, when you swap, you can swipe over to that video recording and there's just a little animation as well when you do so. Overall, that's just about everything I want to show. They do have behind the scenes optimizations for better battery life better speed optimizations, and a couple other things as well. Stay tuned. My top favorite Android Oreo feature is coming very soon, so click that subscribe button so you're notified. Uh, I'd really appreciate you give this video a thumbs up. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.